And welcome back, everybody, to the TV show. I'm Jay Black, joined, as always, by the spectacular Rhea Hughes and the adequate Angelo Catali. <laughs> I, I said adequate, Angelo. That's higher uh, than Thanks a lot. I'm uh, looking forward to the five things you hate about television, Jay Black. <laughs> Let's make five, you negative. I have five <laughs> things that I wrote down. I put a lot of thought into it. And I'm very excited to share. But before we do anything, let's talk about excitement. Or another word that I would like to use, titillation. That's a fun <laughs> word to say. Wow. Angelo... I don't know if you called me or texted me, Angela. You might have called me and said, Jay, you got to check out a third episode of Disclaimer has the hottest sex scene I've ever seen. And, you know, I like the fact that this counts as work. Like it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't dirty old men talking to one another. It was a work-related issue. Angela, I, I want to start with you. Tell me about this scene and uh, then we'll talk about sex scenes in general. Well, that's the first thing. It's not really a scene. It's most of an entire episode. It's like a half an hour of one of the most beautiful women I have ever seen on TV or movies. Her name is Layla George. And she is playing this mom in her late 20s who decides to seduce a 19-year-old kid, guy. I don't know what you want to call it when you're 19. And it takes place over a long period of time. She starts by asking him all these questions about what excites him. And then eventually she holds in this episode a tutorial on how to please a woman. Oh, geez. and I, here's the one thing. I, Did you take notes? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Rhea, there are a couple of things in there that I did learn. But, but here's the thing that got me the most. I was so excited to watch this because it was really beautifully done by the director, Alfonso Cuaron, who was just brilliant. He's Great an job. artist. Later, the whole thing was ruined for me when I found out that this amazingly beautiful woman, Layla George, was married for two years to the antichrist of television and movies, Sean Penn. Oh, no. my God. No, she's in her 20s. He's a craggy old man. He's a big bucket of wrinkles in his 60s. And she was married to her. She came to her senses after a couple That's of years. True. Can you imagine when you see how beautiful this woman is? Well, you did, right, Jay? What am yeah. I making? This I, I watched it. My first thought, because I I hadn't been watching the whole season. I just jumped to episode three because you told me to. Uh, <laughs> I said, uh, "Is that uh, uh, what's her face, Barbie, um, uh, Margot Robbie? Like okay. that's what she looks like." And I was like, "Is that Margot Robbie?" I it felt like her, but it's like she's got that same vibe to her. She's oh. absolutely uh, gorgeous. And yeah, the scene, it's not just a scene. It's, it takes place over the course of a whole episode and it builds and builds and builds. Uh, you know, it, it sort of matches the energy of it sort of matches what a seduction like that might feel like. And uh, it's, it is uh, it, insane that, uh, that something like this showed up on Apple TV. Because if you remember, <laughs> Apple TV, when it first came out, they were like, we're probably not going to do anything that's more than PG because we don't yeah. want to turn anybody yeah. off. And now they're putting out stuff that if you put it on Pornhub, people might go, hey, what's this? Whoa. Right. I know. Rhea, did you see it? I did not see it. So, okay. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to so get your thoughts because it's well, really some people will just say it's porn. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I mean, my, my whole thing is I'm not, like, totally into, like, crazy sex scenes. Like, to me, one of the most well-done sex scenes that was really hot was, I think it was, um, it was Ellen, um, oh, God. Ellen Barkin? Ellen Barkin and... Al Pacino. Um, Al Pacino, no, Sea of Love. No? Not, well, Sea of Love, no, that was really good. But Ellen Barkin was in a movie with Dennis Quaid uh, that was uh, based uh, yes. in uh. New Orleans. And that was the first time they had ever kind of intimated 
uh, not your normal kind of sex. Right. And, you know, you kind of knew what they were doing, but they did it. You know, that was OK with me. But I'm not into like crazy sex scene. Well, you said, oh, read, hold on. I got to mention it because Dennis Quaid was on our show. Yes. The name of the movie is The Big Easy. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm kind of creepy. I asked him uh, what it was like to do that scene. Yeah. Because I have watched that scene 10 times. It's one of the best sex scenes in the history really of movies. And he gave, he didn't really, you know, I wanted, yeah, you know, after it was over, we went away together for a while, you know, I kind of <laughs> thing. <laughs> but it was, uh, uh, that is absolutely, the one that's most famous is Don't Look Now. Uh, Donald Sutherland, yes. the, he just passed away recently, and Julie Christie. Christie, yeah. And the, it's so well done that people for many years assume they were actually doing it, which they have denied and which whoever else was there also denied, which I guess you would anyway. But don't look, if you want to see something that's really close to Pornhub, it's don't look <laughs> now. But they're so, done with more, yeah, they're yeah. more tasteful. There's a story behind them. And yeah. this disclaimer thing, in the history of television, I cannot name you anything that is so erotic and dangerous. Rhea, you cannot watch this with Clark there. <laughs> yeah, you cannot watch this with your kids there. No. God, you know what it's like. Did you see it with your wife? No, no. My wife, uh, I think, would probably turn to me and go, well, that's not happening tonight. Just as <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to imply here, but... Uh, Rhea, I want I want to talk for a second about you saying you're not into sex scenes because that is a uh, a sentiment shared. Speaking of our children, by Gen Z, there was an yes. article that came out. UCLA uh, did a study and they asked Gen Z what they want out of TV and movies, and the vast majority of them, you know, sixty to seventy percent, said we don't want sex scenes. We we want more aromantic stuff. No more sex scenes. We don't want to see it. It's triggering for us to see it without our consent ahead of time. Why do you think the younger generation is so sex non-positive? What, what's going on with that? Well, it's pro I, mean, I mean, there could be two things. And it was funny because you had said to me to ask Clark about it. I didn't have to ask him. I happened to be walking through the living room the other day. And he's watching one of his Marvel stupid shows. And uh, there was a scene where... The, the kid, you know, they're teenagers, as one says the other, you know, uh, you know, and I and I love you. And she's like, did you just say you love me? And I happen to walk by and I stopped and Clark literally paused it. And I go, why did you? And he goes, ah, the whole love thing, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, he's got a girlfriend. So, you know, when I see him, they watch movies together, all snuggled up next together. He does not want to see like kissing scenes like he just it makes him uncomfortable, it makes me uncomfortable. Like we watch some shows together some more adult based shows that have stuff about it. And he just kind of rolls his eyes, not anything sex scenes. I'm talking like only murders in the building, sure. which, you know, has some language and, and, you know, situations or whatever. He's just not into it. I mean, it's just not, not his thing. Angelo, you are a, a pervert. Why do you think younger <laughs> people are not? What's going All on? Right. Uh, there's two things going on here. One is Gen Z. I hate to say it and I hope it doesn't apply to your kid, but they have access to the real thing. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. That was so, my theory. What do I need to see people, uh, you know, simulating it when I can, if I need to see it, I'll just watch it. And the second thing, which is just as important is I'm pretty sure they're lying. Right? <laughs> I think they're probably, uh, uh, you know, it, it's funny. My, my uh, grandkids, my twins are, are pretty much the same age as Clark's and they're yeah. the same way. But I was that age, too, at one time. And what I presented to the public and what I was thinking in the dark <laughs> recesses of my mind yes. were different. And I have a feeling that, uh, th that a lot of them are watching it and then telling everybody how much they hate it. But yeah. uh, this, this climate thing, I, this is next level for me. you got to see people, even if you don't watch the show, watch episode three. Um, I even I told my son to watch it. He's in his 40s. It's okay. <laughs> and, and he was he couldn't believe it either. He yeah. said, I can't believe they did that in the TV show. If so you watch it, it out and you feel the same way as Angelo does, shoot us a text. We want to hear from you. And uh, you know, Angelo, I want to stay with you for a second here because uh you 
I, you're an interviewer. You spent a lot of time on the radio. You mentioned that you talked to uh, uh, Dennis Quaid. I saw. I, I don't know if you saw the clip, but on CNN, uh, this c- contributor named uh, Ryan uh, Gadarsky uh, was talking to Mehdi Hassan, and they got into it a little bit. And he made a joke about, I hope your beeper doesn't go off, a reference to the attack that the Israelis had on the Palestinians, where a bunch of, or Hamas, where a bunch of uh, beepers went off and people died. He was taken out of the show during the break, apologized, uh, the the host apologized, and he is not going to be on CNN anymore. They said he is uh, broken from that. I want to talk to you, number one. What are some moments that you can think of that are similar to this that happened on live TV? And have you, Angelo Cataldi, ever thrown a guest off the air for saying or doing something? And what was it that the. Yeah. Uh, Let me do the second part of it first. I really think, and and it's really almost a question for you, Jay, because you're in the stand up comedy act. You saw what happened at the beginning of the uh, Donald Trump rally at Madison Square Garden where somebody thought it was hilarious to take a shot at Puerto Rican people, right? And and can I just say something? I I do, I'm glad you brought this up. I've been to Puerto Rico several times. I have a friend who's from there. It's one of the most beautiful places I've been to. I love Puerto Rico. I want to like establish that. Go on vacation there, you will love it. But Jay, this is the I don't think there's a place anymore. For any of that kind of humor, yeah. I, even down to, you know, the, the trademark of Polish jokes that we yeah. told. And all, I don't think it's funny to people anymore. And yeah. guys that keep doing it, keep ending up, you know, having to apologize. It's not worth it. You don't do any of that in your act, do you? I try not to. And if I do happen to bu- like bump, because sometimes you have like assumptions that you make that aren't the right assumptions just because right. you're. 48 and not 22 anymore. And right. if I bump into something where somebody will come up to me after the show and go, Hey, you know, we, we don't use that word anymore. Uh, I'd say out of my act immediately because my goal is to make you laugh. It isn't to make you cringe. And I think this cringe humor stuff, it, it, nobody, nobody really appreciates it. I mean, they, no. they appreciate it because it's shocking, but they don't necessarily appreciate it because it's good. So All right, to answer your question about uh, did, did we ever uh, kick a guy off, there actually were two examples. And I was trying to re- remember if Rhea was there it was a long time ago, both of them. One was a columnist for the Allentown Morning Call. Terry Larimer. Terry Larimer, right, exactly. Yes. And Terry Larimer came on and he had written some negative things about our show and about Al Morganti. And you know, you never knew it, Al. Every once in a while, it, it would be oh. like a geyser. It would just go wow. off. Wow! And he went berserk, and he started screaming at Terry Larimer, the guest. Wow. Al Morgan, hey, say it to my face, Terry. Say it to my face. Yeah. Which, when you think about it, since it was a phone call, that wasn't going to happen anyway. <laughs> but he yelled and screamed so much, and the guy, it got so awkward. The guy finally hung up. And the other one also involved Al. We would do it a remote before the start of a baseball season. And an annoying caller named Baseball George showed up at the Vote Recreation Center in Northeast Philly. And he came up to the table to say something. And Al hated him. And he said something. And Al snapped. And he jumped up from the table. (laughs) And baseball George realized Al's going to assault him. <laughs> and baseball George took off across the recreation complex over through two baseball stadiums and Al right behind about to assault and attack yes. him, which frankly would be very good radio. Yes. You know, violence works in radio, but he never actually caught him. But no. those were two examples that came right to mind. I love moments like that, but not on something where a guy is making ethnic humor. That is just stupid. And there's yeah. so much live TV now. People should know better. They still don't, haven't figured that out. Right. Well, that, that's a question I have for you re- real fast, because I don't like confrontation at all. Like, I, I, even when I'm dealing with a heckler, I'm like, please, could you just stop? Let me just do <laughs> As a radio person, it's when something like that happens, like, you know, 
put me in the mindset. Are you thinking good radio, good for ratings, or are you cringing just as hard as the audience when something like that? Yeah, happens? The, the all time example for me is Angelo and Gabe Kapler. Oh. When uh, when Gabe Kapler came on and went after Angelo because you know it was it's a whole to do, but they were going and and the thing is you know our I, what I would always tell people when I because I, I booked the show for twenty something years, I would tell people like Angelo was oh and and the Eagles even knew the Eagles always knew this. the Eagles always appreciated Angelo's in interview because he was always going to be civil and polite and ask the questions that need to be asked but never confrontational. But Gabe came on in a confrontational manager manner. And when that happens, it's going to come back. And I just remember we were at the Borgata and they're going back and forth. And Al and I are like this <laughs> with our heads in our hands. While I also knew that there wasn't a single person in the audience that was turning the radio station off. I yeah. knew it. It was it was like, oh, my God, where is this going to go? And, you know, so listen to me. That's okay, because they both, although I didn't agree with Gabe's point, you know, he's the manager. He was making his point, and those are fine. When you're doing, like, stuff going, you know, is your beeper going to go off because I hope you die? You've crossed a line that, you know, to me, conflict is great theater. It's tremendous theater. But when you when it devolves, and you know when it devolves? Because neither per whichever person it devolves with isn't smart enough to have a debate. It's a good point. Yeah. Very good point. Right. Well, speaking of not smart, let me talk about me for a second. Uh, last week, Angelo challenged me to come up with five things I hate about TV. I want to go through them. If any of them uh, spark some interest in you, uh, just jump in here. But Angela, I worked long and hard on this list, and here we go. Okay. Number five, long delays between seasons of a show. I'm currently waiting for uh, Stranger Things season five. Season four feels like it took place in the 1830s. I have no memory of it, and I don't want to rewatch the whole thing before it comes up. It used to be the show would end in May and start in August or September. Let's just go back to that. Yep. Uh, number four, when a show isn't a show, but it's a six or eight or ten part movie where they just break it up into hour-long chunks. Sometimes this works. I think Slow Horses, this works really well on. But for the most part, it, if make it a movie or make it a show, but don't do this weird hybrid where I got to wait 10 hours to get the same thing I could have gotten in two. Uh, number three, sports cliches. I don't like when people speak in cliche and when I watch a lot of the morning shows before a football game or analysts after a game, I hear the, the phrase at the end of the day, mark it down next time, sit and watch and mark down how many times they say at the end of the day, Bill Cower alone will say uh, at the end of the day, 60 uh, times in a broadcast, you're on TV, learn different words. It's not that hard. All right, hold on. I'm, yeah. I'm breaking in here because you mentioned Bill Cower. Bill Cower is now doing the inserts in games, taking you to big moments, yeah. and he stinks at that too. <laughs> He's boring. There's nothing, there's nothing he does well on television, and he's one of the greatest coaches in NFL history. Why is that man still being promoted as a big force on CBS's pregame show? He stinks. I couldn't He's agree more. Lousy. Couldn't agree That's more. That's the way you rip things, Jay. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of soft right here, what I'm hearing. Come on, attack some people. Let's I, go. Well, I got I got somebody in number one that I'm going to attack specifically. Okay, fine. Mm. Oh, I know where that's going. Yeah, so do I. I no, you don't. You have no idea where this is going. <laughs> All right. Okay. Zaslav, we've already talked about number two: the disappearing and moving shows. Actually, this is related to David Zaslav. Uh, David Zaslav to save a couple of pennies so he doesn't have to pay residuals or whatever the deal is is taking shows that HBO owns and moving them and shuffling around, selling them to Netflix. I want to be able to watch the show where it is. It should sit right. in one spot and not float from uh, a streamer to streamer, that's bad for everybody. And if you want to know why these streamers are failing, that's a large reason. And finally, my number one thing, and Rhea, I know you've probably seen this because I know you went to an AMC last week. I don't know, Angela, if you watched The Wild Robot at an AMC, but we, we don't need Nicole Kidman telling me about the magic of the movies anymore. Yeah. That was I need the magic of why her face hasn't moved in 10 years. <laughs> 
I'm glad you said it, Rhea, because I didn't know if it was misogynist for me to say it, but the fact that you brought it up. Yeah, I use some special effects to make her face move like a regular human's face. <laughs> and she's sitting there whispering and doing ASMR about the magic of the movies. AMC, I already paid for my ticket. You have <laughs> me. You don't advertise for the thing that I'm at when yes. I'm at the thing. So Correct. it's ridiculous. I know they probably gave her $5 million to do that dumb thing and they want to get their money's worth out of it, but it's done. It should be abandoned forever. And those are five right. things I hate about that. That's great. Since you're mentioning before movies, I just want to say I am pretty much deaf. I wear hearing aids some of the time. And without the hearing aids, the volume before the movie is insanely loud. Yeah. It's yeah, ridiculous. It Stop I agree. it. Yeah. It pretty much ruined the wild robot for me. <laughs> Stop it. That so, in the movie itself. <laughs> yeah. So Pollyanna here did not like those things. So, uh, yeah. and the last thing I want to talk about before we get to our regular segments uh, is I, I saw your movie last week, Angelo. Uh, yeah. Nobody died. Is it nobody died or no one died? No one died. No one died. Okay. I will be doing a video review of this this week. So if you follow along on any of my socials, you'll see it coming up. I just want to say this. I was going in. I, I promise you, I tried not to have low expectations, but I thought it was a local guy doing a local documentary. How good could this possibly be? And it was fantastic and this I, I i gotta say this if you work in the industry and i told the director this because i talked to him i i cannot imagine this wouldn't do great on a netflix or a, a hulu or any espn plus any of these streamers they should purchase it immediately it captures perfectly the feeling of what it was like to have lived through those uh wing bowls as an audience member because i i listened my dad would talk about Heavy Kevy and would talk about uh, El Wingador all the time. He loved your station. He loved that uh, event. And to see how it builds from a local radio promotion into the biggest radio promotion in the whole country, it, it tells the story in a very engaging way, but it also captures the insanity of everything that went around it. And uh, it, I don't know how this is going to shake out. If it goes to a streamer, watch it. If it goes to where you have to buy it on iTunes and you're listening to this show, check it out. It was great. And Angelo, you are yeah. hilarious. You, every time they cut to you, big laughs in the theater. You did spectacularly. I was, my nose on a 30-foot screen is really <laughs> scary. But I just say it has hot women, fat men, intense competition, uh, wild fights in the stands. I had never seen video of that. Wow, now I know why we stopped doing the thing. And here's the last <laughs> thing I'll say about it. Ray Dittinger hated the concept of wing ball. He came one time because he lost a bet to Glenn Mack now. So last week at the premiere, he didn't tell anyone. He just showed up, sat in the back, and said afterwards that he loved the documentary. He did. So how exactly is somebody who hates the event likes the film about the event. But I, I hope it has an opportunity to go to people so they can really get a good look at it because it does justice to our craziest and our most controversial promotion. Yes. Right. And uh, it's uh, it, it, fantastic. And one of the guys that is featured heavily yes. in the documentary is our friend and sponsor, Steven Singer, who... <laughs> helped make those lovely rings, but also he has jewelry at basically every price point. Angelo, you know this guy. Tell me about Well, here's the thing. He gives his philosophy. He said most of the sponsors did not want to go near this event because women were running around half naked and the guys were gorging and throwing up and all sorts of horrible stuff. He said, I loved it because I realized that when you're in a business – there are a lot of different tastes that go into who comes in. Some people are a little more refined and some people are like us, uh, like me. And they don't, you know, they don't look at it that way. He embraces all philosophies. And that's why he's so great at selling jewelry, because you will go in and regardless of who you like, it doesn't matter who you're voting for. You go in to see Steven Sigger, and Steven Sigger will treat you with honesty and respect. 
and you'll get what you went in to get, which is a great piece of jewelry at a fair price. Lovely. And uh, we appreciate Stephen Singer for coming to our uh, 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 Wing Bowl and for uh, uh, sponsoring our show. Uh, go to IHateStevenSinger.com on the other corner of 8th and Walnut. Spectacular Stephen Singer. The link is right there in the description. You can click on it right now. And my well, you said link- which, which is best apart, the price points. Like yeah. whatever you're looking for, you're going to be able to get something beautiful for whatever personal life you want to get for it. I mean, and they make it like literally so simple. They put the price points there. You want to spend this much to get this? And it, and they're all gorgeous. So you'll love it. And we were talking before the uh, podcast started, my son is forcing his girlfriend to watch uh, Nightmare on Elm Street on Halloween. So he might be needing to go to Steven Singer soon. <laughs> yes. They make up bracelet or necklace or something. <laughs> I keep telling him, don't be dumb. And he keeps no. saying, you were for- It will cost you. You said you were dumb for 20 years and I'm still here. And I was like, good point. Uh, all right, Rhea, tell me about some British TV that uh, I should and shouldn't watch. Okay, so I have, it's actually a documentary and I know you guys like documentaries. This is called Murder in the Village, Who Killed the Doctor's Wife? Available on BritBox. Um, it's a two-part documentary about a doctor's wife in 1983 who, um, uh, from this quaint and quintessential You want to see a quintessential English village? This is Coggeshall. It's, I want to say maybe like a half hour, 40 minutes outside of London. Homes there now go for like millions of pounds, but it is a beautiful, quaint village. And this doctor and his wife went to their local pub in 1983, uh, as as they did all the time, returned home to their sprawling farmhouse. And uh, he says, the doctor, Dr. Uh, Robert Jones, I'm going to get, her name was Diane Jones. Uh, Dr. Robert Jones says he went to get the dog to take him for a walk and turned around and was like, my wife is missing. <laughs> he was the only suspect for forever for, to me, one simple reason. It took him nine days to call police to <laughs> say that she was missing. Okay. <laughs> nine. Okay. <laughs> Now, in 1983, you can get away with this. So, um, you know, he, like I said, he was always considered uh, the biggest suspect. And here's I, the one thing I will say. I don't think, that, Jay, you mentioned earlier, I don't think it required two episodes. Because one thing I don't like about documentaries, they were they they repeat a lot. Yeah. Like they're yep. trying to drive yep. home a point. And yep. you have the same guy saying the same thing all the time. So, but it was really intriguing to me because... One of the detectives, because they, th- what happened was cold case decided to look it over uh, in 2020. And that's how this documentary came about. And the detective who was looking into the cold case, he said, this is what's frustrating. If this crime had been committed today, it would have been solved in minutes right. because of cell phone triangulation, CCT cameras, advances in, in forensic medicine and the stuff that went, it was all circumstantial, the evidence, but if it had been today, you know, they would have been nailed this down, but it, it was really, you know, there's victim blaming. Oh, she liked to drink. Well, the husband was a drunk too. Right. Uh, it involved a, their baby daughter. It It is, it's a fascinating look at what was going on in people's lives. And even though it's English, but all over in 1983 and how things have changed. But uh, I, I really, I found it fascinating. So it's two episodes, Murder in the Village, Who Killed the Doctor's Wife on BritBox. Rhea, I thought of you last night uh, because I was at my daughter's high school orientation for next year, and they were mentioning all the different clubs that they had. And one of the clubs, I kid you not, was the Cold Case Club, where they look into unsolved crimes and try to figure out who did it based on the evidence in there? I guess because the podcasts and documentaries are so popular, but I was like, yeah. this is, uh, Rhea should come in and give a speech to this club. I will be a guest lecturer. <laughs> and you said you had one you did not like. So Tell yeah, me. so I had one other, and this is amazing because if you guys have popped on the Netflix, this is as of recently as yesterday or the day before, it's number three on Netflix. It's called Territory. People are saying it's the basically... It's a uh, Yellowstone with an Australian accent. I went uh, Outback. I love anything with the Outback. Sure. So, so I said, all right, let me check this out. Robert Taylor is the patriarch. 
I loved him in the long running Longmire on A and E. Absolutely, I never knew he was actually originally Australian uh, from Longmire because you know he played American. I couldn't have hated it more. Ah. It, and, and hear what I'm shocked at. It's uh, six million people have viewed it on Netflix since it's, it popped on there. Eighty percent reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm. I couldn't get through the first episode, but I did. I I always don't want to give a review unless I at least watch one episode. But to me, I got to be grabbed. I hated everybody. There wasn't <laughs> a single person I liked in this. And the it basically it's it's a cattle the largest cattle run operation in the world. Yeah, Marion Station, based in Australia, um, the heir to the empire, Daniel, dies very early on. I'm not giving any secrets away. He's killed by a dingo. Remember, Angela, the dingo ate my baby? <laughs> so ate my baby. By, yeah. So killed yeah. by a dingo. And then it's all about who's going to get the empire. Uh, I just hated everybody. And it's funny. So I did go and read some reviews. Like I said, most people like it. But on Reddit, the reviews were not so good. They said basically it's Yellowstone um, made for Walmart. Um, yeah. So not fans. I did not. I'm just telling you, you might like it. I turned it on. Didn't care. And I and I love Westerns. Longmire, Dark Winds. I'm a Western, modern Western person. Didn't like it at all. All right. No on, was that, it was called uh, Territory. 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 Netflix. All right, so no on that. And Angelo, I think you are not, you don't have a lot of nice things to say either this week. Tell well, you it was uh, the week of the World Series. I kind of struck out. I will say again, I highly recommend Disclaimer. The whole series is fascinating. I think it's well done. And I did watch the whole Lincoln Lawyer uh, on Netflix. I finished it great. yesterday. It, I finished it yesterday. Isn't it really good? Phenomenal. It's, yes. uh, it's way better than season two. Yes. Absolutely loved it. It's a really good show. So yeah. I can recommend those two. Here's what I won't recommend. Billy Crystal has a new show, a horror show on Apple. It's called Before. It's awful. All right? okay. Thank fact, you. I was going to watch it. I yeah. think he's got a tube, which <laughs> it's not a good hair piece either. If that, I, Anyway, I did like that. Then I tried Unhinge, which just dropped on um, Netflix. And the reason I tried that is because it's Russell Crowe as a crazed man with road rage uh, going insane for like an hour and a half. The first hour is good, but then it's just so stupid. They don't know how to end it. And there's another one, Woman of the Hour, which is in the top 10 with Anna Kendrick. It's about a guy who was on the dating game and then became a serial killer or they found that he was a serial killer. Again, good start, bad finish. And Rhea, I got one for you. I okay. started watching it, but I won't give an opinion on something with that's British. It's okay. a brand new um, series on Hulu, Rivals, starring oh. David Tennant. Oh, okay. And there's another guy. The whole it begins on the on the Concord with the very famous English guy having sex with his wife in the bathroom. That's really? very perceived. But here's no. Here's the thing. In this, this is happening more and more, Jack. Yeah. Another penis. Oh, more penis. In the, in the pilot. I want you to watch it. No, yeah, I, what do I know? All of a sudden, I'm minding my own business, and here's a guy with a very big penis. On the, on my, and I have an 82-inch screen, so you can use a lot of penis <laughs> there. And I'm going to just warn Pete, Rhea, I want you to check it out, though, because it has potential. Gail didn't like it, but I thought, it ha it has such a great English flavor, and I think you would really enjoy it. You may have even a lot of it is done on this fancy estate. It's beautiful. Okay. The countryside is great. The ca David Tennant is a great actor. He's and, wonderful. And he's really him. good in this, yeah. and it's about uh, he's a TV guy, and uh, I think you would it fits what we do here because a lot of it is inside television. Check it out, Rivals. I want I, I would love to get your review on that. But I want to give one quick. Room. I want to just give one quick review, and Angelo, I think you will be totally into it. I started watching it last night. I got through two episodes. The 2004 Red Sox comeback. Oh, I won't it's, watch that. No, Ange. No, but here, no. The reason why I think you will. It's three episodes. It's got sit downs with all of the play, like all of the main people. I popped. I made it through a little bit of season two, episode two. 
her chilling does not look great. I will just say that. <laughs> but but I'm just telling you, it's got some stuff that I don't remember. And yeah. we lived through that. Yeah. I, I'm absolutely enjoying it immensely. 2003, wow. Red Sox come back. Uh, I think it's on Netflix. I'll check real quick. I was a Yankee fan back then. It's still painful to me. <laughs> Angel, so, this, this, series, have, by the way. this might upset you, but that uh, series also opens with a sex scene. It's uh... <laughs> yes. Oh, and one thing. Speaking of sports, Jay. Yeah. On Sunday night, but um, I'm sorry, Monday night, the World Series beat Monday Night Football. Wow. No! 13.8 to 13.6. That hasn't happened in decades. No, it's that's the what the New it... York Giants fall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what they said. And the World Series has New York and LA, the two biggest yeah. TV yeah. markets. Whatever. That's amazing. Uh, by the way, that, that um that series, that documentary, uh the comeback of the uh, Red Sox is on Netflix. Netflix. All right. All right. What do we talk about this week, Angela? We've got a lot. All right. Well, everybody should check out disclaimer, especially episode three on Apple TV. Don't do it with your kids. It's nearly porn. Yeah. So if you're looking for a phenomenal uh of sex seed at a movie, don't look back is available on Amazon Prime and Apple Plus. It's widely regarded as the best. Um, check your local listings for No One Died. We don't know when it'll be bought or what'll happen with it, but Jay gave it a very positive review. Uh, in the British realm, Murder in the Village is on BritBox by way of Amazon. And do not watch Territory on Netflix. Also, do not watch Before on Apple Plus, Unhinged, and Women of the Hour on Netflix. But do watch... The Lincoln Lawyer on Netflix, which is really good. And uh, I guess that's it. Oh, and the Red Sox comeback, yeah. 2004 comeback, yeah. Netflix documentary. Check that out as well. And also make sure you check out our great sponsor, Steven Singer. The link is yes. right in the description. You can also check out Angelo Cataldi's book, Loud, if you want to hear some of the stories <laughs> that show up in the Wing Bowl documentary. That's right there. You can get that on Amazon, Audible, or AngeloCataldi.com. Also, make sure you check out my movie, Tenant, which is available <laughs> for Halloween right now. It's cheap. It's four ninety nine to rent, nine ninety nine dollars <laughs> to buy. What are you waiting for? Go buy it, you cheap state. And uh, thank you so much for rating and reviewing and telling everybody about the podcast. We grow each week thanks to you. And we'll be back next week with more great TV content. See you then. Oh, hit, Good hit job.